Hey, I'm Tori Sanford. I'm here to do Chapter 9, Communication. Um, you and I are communicating right now as I present this video to you and as you respond. Um, we use communication skills, communication media, and communication exchange to receive and to provide information. And in the workplace settings, it works no different. Uh, we send messages through several types of media, um, whether it be digital or traditional. And we can, those messages can be one-way messages or two-way messages. One-way meaning we don't really need any type of feedback. And two-way meaning we do require feedback um, as confirmation. And sometimes those uh, messages can't don't get across as we plan them to, um, so that's a problem. Um, and that's probably sometimes because the uh, sender receiver, sorry, does not miss does not understand the content, or they choose to only uh, pay attention to certain parts of the message, or they could be distracted by something in the environment, or just have too much going on that they're overwhelmed. And sometimes the sender makes the confusion because they leave out information. Although those are barriers to uh, communication, um, effective com communication is possible. Um, if, we be my if we're mindful of our own mannerisms and habits and we practice to continuous continuously improve our communication skills, um, that would contribute to our personal development and to our leadership skills. Um, then skills like listening, meeting, um, excuse me, listening, presenting, meeting, and writing. Um, I mentioned earlier intention in intentionally listening and paying close attention to ensure that the details of the message are understood while giving and receiving nonverbal feedback. Um, when you're the person being listened to during an important presentation, uh, you know, there are some techniques that could help you get the audience's attention. Um, if I were standing, I could be moving, you know, a little bit uh, back and forth. Uh, as I speak, I could use body language and I could emphasize certain words of my sentence and um, that's called verbal intonation. And um, like when I'm when you're conducting meetings, that requires preparation, organization, direction, and purpose. <clears throat> and speaking of body language, it's also key when you're leading meetings, and um, it's a it's a form of nonverbal communication. And um, the listening skills, the presentation skills, and the meeting skills, I mentioned them together because they all involve face-to-face -face interaction, the oral communication. And so with that, it's important to know what certain gestures and postures mean. Um, certainly uh, in the United States and other countries don't have the same meanings for certain gestures and postures, so you have to be careful when you're doing uh, business with someone from another culture. Um, it could be something could be offensive that's okay here in the United States. You have to know what you're doing, you're dealing with. Um, so some tips for some positive nonverbal communication here in the United States would be to smile when you're speaking, um, to make eye contact with the person you're speaking with, and to use hand gestures to reinforce your message and head nods when you're listening. Um, it's important to not fold your arms a lot of times or close your hands. Um, cause that makes it seems like you're being defensive and you don't want to, that, especially maybe if you're in a job interview, uh, when we can't, uh, communicate face to face or when we choose not to communicate in person, um, we can choose to use our writing skills. That means our emails, uh, memos and other correspondence. Um, but those have rules and they need to be followed. Um, so. We choose our means of communication and that those vary. Um, some organizations or most organizations use the internet and they use it to their advantage and they use it to sometimes to communicate externally to uh, people, consumers about the detail, the details about their business and their products and services, customer testimonials. Sometimes they do e-commerce to make sales on the, uh, web, the internet, their websites. And, um, the all uh, they also give you ex the internet also gives you access to email instant messaging and uh the internet um internet is uh for internal website for employees to access and to share information with one another and there's also a way that employees can work from different locations off site and that's called telecommuting um another way for sharing uh is sharing information is called collaboration software like SharePoint and allows multiple employees to work on the same project together, different locations. 
sometimes simultaneously, simultaneously, <laughs> um, a more traditional, more traditionally. I cannot speak more traditionally we still use the telephone uh, for business communications and again the most uh, high media and media richness uh, face to face um, we can see each other expressions and so forth give each other feedback and clear up any missed or vague information and if you're looking at the PowerPoint there is a slide for Dilbert and he is a witness that face-to-face -face communication would have been probably best uh, in that situation. Um, depending on your audience, the message, um, excuse me, depending on your message and the audience, I should say, um, some media formats work more effectively than others um, in getting your message across. And so that's what is meant by media richness. Question, how important is media richness to your uh, workplace communication um, process and which medium do you prefer um, primarily to use? That's your question. Um, in the workplace, the lines of communication can go several ways. They can go downward, upward, horizontal, or diagonally. Um, and that means basically just as they sound. With downward, for example, I've worked for a company who would um, hold monthly meetings to give us all uh, information on progress, um, company progress, like projects and forecasted goals that basically dealing with the money that the company is making. And um, so that's downward communication. And if you've ever had a supervisor that says they had the open door policy for all the employees and one day you went in and you spoke with them about an idea you had, um, then you've used upward communication. Um, horizontal uh, communication occurs when, for instance, the manager of operations, the manager of, of research and development, and the manager of quality get together, have meetings so they can perfect some type of uh, new product that the company is uh, working on. And again, that's horizontal communications. Um, at the same company I spoke about a few minutes ago, I was appointed to an uh, energy efficient team and that's where representatives from all the different departments, different levels of the department came together to meet to discuss and resolve any issues that were found throughout the building. Social networking. That's when befriending co-workers and hanging out with them and conversating about the job and who's doing what. Um, that's a form of social networking. And it's, social networking is also the social media sites that we all know, like LinkedIn, Facebook, and you know the rest of them because you use them, I'm sure, just like I do. Um, so with communication, um, I would say that it's extremely important that uh, we all brush up on our communication for growth in all aspects of our lives. Thank you for listening.